Talks. Also D-Day themed is our press review today, 80 years on from uh, the Second World War being changed with the D-Day landings. And Dipti's been looking at how some of the papers are covering for, uh, it for us. Well, so it's some very poignant front pages from the French and British papers today. Let's start with Libération, which calls it the most Ukrainian day. Of course, it's a play on words of the longest day, which is what uh, D-Day is often referred to as Libération, uh, the left-wing paper, putting a special focus on the appearance or the presence of Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian leader, at D-Day commemoration ceremonies, and the notable absence of Russia's Vladimir Putin. Russia, of course, not invited this year, given the very tense geopolitical context. And on that note, uh, there's also a, a very uh, interesting cartoon by a, a cartoonist, uh, a Cuban cartoonist who sees uh, Joe Biden uh, mingling with World War II veterans while Vladimir Putin is peering behind a door completely isolated. West France also uh, a, a regional paper, a very uh, um, prominent regional paper here in France that covers pretty much news from all of Western France. This paper um, uh, obviously headlining on D-Day 80 years ago, it was the Normandy landings. The paper also noting that it has a special partnership today with The Guardian and is offering us a bilingual edition uh, of its uh, D-Day coverage today. Nice way to sum it up. Uh, well, we've talked about some of those dignitaries as well that are going to be taking part in the ceremonies today. Amongst them is uh, King Charles. Absolutely, and King Charles is uh, the focus of, of a lot of the British papers today because... Uh, he paid tribute to D-Day veterans yesterday, and you see that here on the front page of The Sun, tears for our heroes. King Charles uh, 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 delivering a very emotional tribute to, uh, uh, to those uh, D-Day veterans, saying it was a privilege to hear their testimonies. Uh, the Daily Express, uh, another British daily, also uh, reprising uh, King Charles's words eternally in their debt. And in fact, in its inside coverage today, the paper uh, has uh, uh, printed some of the testimonies of D-Day veterans. There's a really interesting article down the bottom here. This is written by John Duke, a D-Day veteran who really expresses his sadness and his, uh, his worry that the lessons that we should have heeded from the D-Day landings um, that we should have learned are not being heeded today, given the current tense and terse political climate of the world. Now, uh, Dipti's been doing a bit of uh, archive digging for us as well. She's found some papers dating all the way back to 1944. Yeah, it's really interesting. Before I get into that, I also want to show you these uh, two images that were sh uh, shared on social media. So this is the order that was given by Dwight Eisenhower on uh, ahead of the D-Day landings. And it's a really, um, uh, it's a very poignant uh, uh, image because, you know, you see what he told soldiers on that uh, just before the D-Day landings. He said, your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped and battle-hardened. I have full confidence in your courage. We will accept nothing less than full uh, victory. You also have uh, this uh, letter here written by I Dwight Eisenhower in which he, uh, in which he uh, prior to the D-Day landings, he said he would accept full responsibility and sole responsibility if it ever failed. And you see how nervous he was uh, in that letter. He had signed it July 5 and not June 5. So some images uh, really telling of the time. Let's go to those front pages you mentioned. This was from the Bangor Daily News. That's a paper in Maine, Invasion Begins. Uh, you also have this one from Alabama, the continent invaded. And look at the, the bold headline and the way they've kind of uh, uh, announced this news uh, from, uh, uh, that's from the Alabama Journal. This is St. Petersburg's Times. This is a paper from Florida, Hitler's Europe invaded. The greatest military operation in history begins in France. And that was not an exaggeration at all. I want to show you one here from France. This is Le Petit Marseillais. This is a paper from uh, uh, Marseille. And you see here, it, they call it a, an attempted uh, English American, British American landing on Normandy's beaches. And what they do focus on is a, a solemn warning by uh, Maréchal Pétain, uh, the leader of the Vichy government here, saying that uh, France will only save itself if it observes the most strictest of discipline. Indeed, this paper actually did have an editorial line that uh, was very much in favor of the Vichy uh, government. Uh, and a uh, little fun, uh, fun fact, I guess you could call it that, the paper uh, also uh, stopped circulating almost as soon as, um, as, as soon as uh, the, uh, right after the liberation of France. So that paper completely disappeared right after the liberation of France.
Tipsy, you're ending with uh, a lovely story, aren't you, from uh, Le Parisien? It's a really nice story, uh, Stuart. This is from Le Parisien on the front page. This is a picture of Harold Terence. He's 100 years old. Uh, he's a, a D-Day veteran. Uh, he was a 20-year-old man when he was sent to the Normandy beaches in 1944. He wanted to be a fighter pilot, but he was colorblind, so he was sent to work in radio transmissions. He learned Morse co code, and he was responsible for the ground-to-air comms with pilots of four P-47 Thunderbolts. He's back for the commemoration services this Thursday, as he has done uh, several times in the past. This time, though, with a sweet added bonus, he plans to get married. He's 100 years old. He plans to marry his 96-year-old fiance in Carenton-les-Marais, not far, he says, from where so many of his friends died back in 1944, Stuart. Dipti, thanks very much. It's a lovely story and uh, good to have that dip back into the archives as well from Dipti. Thanks very much.